This morning I want to give you an overview of how to find your breed registry, what your breed standards are, and how to find out what you need paperwork-wise in order to enter the fair. So we're going to start by hopefully visiting over here. This is the Associated Registry page. Associated Registry in Wamego, Kansas pretty much I think is the entire economy in Wamego. They support over 200 breeds I believe of purebred livestock so chances are pretty good that if you have paperwork it's going here. Oh that's interesting it's a division of the American Hampshire Sheep Association but they do work with pretty much most breeds of livestock. My paper is through American Gotland Sheep Society and North American Shetland Sheep Association are both through Associated Registry. So these are the people down here that you're going to end up talking to and there's a little bit about them. Again, you can visit the website and learn about that for yourself. I just kind of wanted to introduce you to this because I've talked to several of these people. And then there's the associations with whom they work. So if you're not sure where to go and look for papers or the instructions, or if you just want like a central location for stuff, you can go here, Associated Registry. And then let's say you have Texels, you can come down here, Texel Sheep Breeders Society. There's the website of the association. And then here's the paperwork that you need to fill out in order to get your registration papers. So let's hop over here. This is the American Gotland Sheep Society. And let's click on standards. Now we have breed shows because you want to compare apples to apples, right? You want to compare the sheep that are most alike to one another so that you can judge fairly, right? And you need to know what you are being judged on and what you're hoping to produce. So if we go down here, you can see the breed standards. And we'll kind of compare that as we go along through this program to um, Tilda, who again, I'm hoping to take to State Fair in 2019. Now, if you're an adult and you are showing sheep at the State Fair, you will be in an open class. That means it's open to everyone. It's not limited to just youth or um, 4-H or FFA. That can also mean that the prizes might be limited, but that's okay. There are first time people, there are really big breeders, there are kids that come out of 4-H and want to continue showing their sheep. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's open to everybody. So the nerve wracking part of it, I guess, if you will, is that again, you're showing against everybody and anybody and quite often it's experienced people whereas you might not feel like you have any idea of what you're doing. So always start with your breed standards. We're going to show our sheep in an open wool class, all other breeds, because there aren't enough Gotlands to make up an entire Gotland class or division. So Tilda will be showing against possibly Shetlands, Hampshires, Merinos, um, Cormos, it just depends. If it's got wool, it's going to be in that class. So that's judging apples to oranges, but let's start with her breed standard and see what she should look like. Medium size, solid color. That's usually that steel gray color. Luster long wool. It should have a real shine without having to be washed. With clean head and legs, meaning there's no wool on the head or legs. Fine bone, I do find with the Gotlands, they look a little like they're on stilts. Big body, tiny legs. Good breadth and depth of body. That means we want to see a deep brisket. Gray fleece, solid color with shading allowed. No distinct patterns or spotting. So if she had spots or patches, we would not take her to fair. The judges for these competitions can come from anywhere and largely don't come from a wool background. If they do, it's probably limited to the breed that they raised as children or that they worked with in college maybe. But nobody's going to be an expert in every single breed. So keep that in mind. This is more for breed specific shows. 
that we're talking about today or for just your own evaluation of your flocks. You should know the standard for your breed. You should know how to fit it out for show because not every sheep is shown the same way. But don't rely on the judge in the ring to be completely familiar with this right here. He probably didn't know you were coming with a Gotland and didn't look it up. So let's go down here, 165 to 190 mature body weight, ideal height, black becoming gray, small white markings are acceptable. Should have a naturally short tail, so if you see a Gotland in the ring and it's got horns or it's got a dock tail, that's, that's not up to breed standards, that animal should be disqualified. Fleece is fine, long, lustrous, and dense with clearly defined curl and staple, soft to the touch. Soft to the touch, but if you look at the micron, that's pretty high. So you're looking at more of a Lincoln, Romney, Wensleydale handle, not anything like, you know, the inner coat of an Icelandic or a Merino even. And then here's your list of the disqualifications. Now, do yourselves and everybody else a favor. If your animal does not meet breed standards, don't bring it. Just don't. So let's go over here. Here is the State Fair website for Kentucky. If you're in a different state, you can certainly Google that information. What you're going to look for is the premium book. I don't think the premium book has been put out for next year, but you'll be able to see the judges here for every class, um, every division down here general information this is going to be in information and rules that's going to tell you kind of the dates and the layout and whether or not you can have golf carts there and blah 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 whatever yada yada and then west hall and east hall now i also exhibited yarn last year and so i had things in two different areas in the state fair so i needed to read all of those rules when to pick up when to drop off what you could expect when the judging would take place, stuff like that is going to be in there. So let's go down here to sheep. Go to premium book. The premium book is enormous. Okay, so this is going to tell you who's in charge. If you have a problem, you can go take it up with them. Uh, and there's your judges, and this is last year's. So we've got one judge for wool breeds, one judge for meat breeds. You notice neither of them come from Kentucky. You kind of get judges where you can find them, and I found it tended to be a little cannibalistic. Most of the exhibitors in the open classes were not from Kentucky, and this is why it's important not only to show, but to attend the exhibitor meeting at the end and we'll talk about that in another class. So this is where you can find the judging schedule. Here are the classes that are offered. So if you have an Oxford, Monadale, Suffolk, Columbia, Hampshire, Corydale, Cheviot, or Rambouillet, Dorset, Southdown, those are breed classes. Okay, so if you have those sheep, you're not going to enter them in all other breeds wool or all other breeds meat because you are being judged there's enough of that breed that's entered or that is expected to enter that, that you don't need to be judged against people outside of your own breed. All other breeds meet. Tunis would probably fall in there. Actually, Tunis could probably have their pick of meat or wool. You notice there's not a Katahdin class, so that would be in all other breeds meat, etc. Icelandics would fall under all other breeds wool. The Parade of Champions, that is the grand champion in every division. And we'll look at that too. And then Wool and Lamb on Parade, that's kind of a fun show. We'll talk about that later. So here's the rules. It tells you when you have to enter and how to enter and how much it's going to be to enter if you're late. It tells you how to fill out your exhibitor form which is done online now and that was actually really easy and it's really easy also to go back in and change if you want to add a sheep like I wasn't sure how many I was going to do at first so I entered Basil and then I went back later and decided to add a couple others 
um, it tells you when to show up, right? So here on Thursday, they'll be accepted beginning at 10. This breed must be in the barn by four. Why? Because if you go up to the top of the page, they have a show that night. So everybody needs to be there. Open sheep will be released at 5 p.m. on Sunday. That means you can't take your sheep home until 5 p.m. Now you'll find out at the exhibitor meeting if that's going to change. Use all natural bedding. You can leave if you have to be at another state fair, but you have to show proof. It shows you which gate to use. It tells you that you need ear tags, right, for your association. Can't use muzzles. Can't paint your sheep. Shouldn't dope your sheep. Okay, pertaining to South Downs, South Downs are to be shown slick sheared. You need to find out how your breed is fitted for show. So let's go here and look up preparing show lambs living with Gotlands. So this is a pretty influential Gotland breeder in the US and she's written an article on how to fit your Gotlands for show. Preparing show lambs. So all of this stuff is stuff that we're going to do, body condition, hooves, bathing. So she bathes her lambs a week before show. I'm guessing that breed standard is you don't block them, you don't wash them. They should be shown in fleece. And when an animal is shown in fleece, that means that you need enough wool on the animal in order to get an accurate picture of what the fleece is like. It doesn't mean that it needs to be a foot long, but it should probably be more than an inch. So somewhere between there. So here we go. It's a long wool breed. Don't trim them closely, which means you're not going to block them. And that was kind of a hard thing to do. When I got there, everybody's carting, everybody's slick shearing, you know, like this South Down says, everybody was fitting their animals out. And here I was with these fluffy Shetlands with nothing to do. So it left me a lot of free time. Okay, you're limited to four entries in yearling or senior lamb. It gets really crowded at the gate. It gets really crowded moving around the ring. So there's a good reason that you're limited. And that's another reason to refer back to your breed standard. And when you're at home, be your own worst critic, you know, take pictures of your animals and then look at them later and compare it to the breed standard and say, do I match that? Is this the best of my animals that I can take to represent what's on my farm? You will find out at the show when the exhibitors meeting will be. Pens will be assigned by the superintendent according to availability and number and size of sheep. So I had really tiny sheep and they prepare for monster monodales. I asked for two pens because I had one ewe and two rams and they gave me three pens. They gave me an extra pen for tack. So I ended up with a lot more space than I needed. That also gives you an opportunity and we'll talk about this later on to set up your own display and there's awards for that as well. Make sure you keep your stall clean. You can sleep there on a cot. You just can't put up a tent. Okay, so this tells you here what you win. Kentucky classes open to Kentucky exhibitors only. All right, so when you look down here, let's look at the cheviot. This is the total amount in the purse. This says how much you're going to get. If you get first prize, you're going to get $25. Second prize is $15.30 prize is 10. Reserve champion gets a, bit, a rosette and S. I can't remember what that is. I think that's, anyway, you get a banner, grand champion. Natural colored. If you have a natural colored sheep, it doesn't mean you can enter this class. You must be registered with Natural Colored Wool Growers Association. Otherwise, you fall into all other breeds. All right, down here. Here we go. All other breeds wool type. This is the amount offered for all the open classes. So all of the classes down here in this division total are going to parcel out $624 of prize money. The amount offered for Kentucky classes, $272. So that's 
extra above and beyond the prize money and it is only for in-state sheep and this is why you should show in your state fair so we see here class one yearling ram premium a so if you won you'd get 30 bucks uh, class one kentucky is also yearling ram but only kentucky rams can be entered because it's our state fair and you can win one without winning the other or you can win both so say you've got um, a suffolk ram and he was bred in kentucky he's going to be automatically entered in both of these classes and even though a merino from iowa may take yearling ram you can still win kentucky champion yearling ram does that make sense and then in that case see there's b right here for the premium you go back up to the premium schedule you would get twelve dollars for winning that and the merino would get thirty dollars for winning the yearling class overall each entry must be registered in their respective association so again that's where you go back you're going to make sure that your paperwork is filed with your respective association through associated registry probably Entries in all other breeds show are limited to those breeds that do not have their own show, and we talked about that. You saw there was a Corydale class up there, a Dorset class, Hampshire. There wasn't, I don't think there's a Polypay, so Polypay would be with us. Okay. And then you can show groups, pair of ram lambs, pair of yearling ewes, pair of ewe lambs. A flock is one ram and two ewes and two ewe lambs. So again, you can see how... You really need to have control of your animals. You really need to make sure that you're exhibiting the best of the best because it's gonna start getting real crowded in there. Uh, the judge will select the best fleece in each class, best ewe fleece and best ram fleece will each receive a rosette. And then you get premier exhibitor award from all of your prizes. Okay, so down here, after the conclusion of all of the shows, all breed champions are eligible to compete for the Supreme Champion Ram and Supreme Champion U. Now, the problem with being in all other wool breeds is you don't get this. Don't even, I mean, you can stay for it if you want to watch it, but you don't get to go to the Parade of Champions because you are in all other, you're not a breed champion. That's just for the um, Hampshire show, the Monadale show, the Cheviot show, the Dorper show, those champions compete for champion overall. But another thing that you can do is enter the Wool and Lamb on Parade. It's open to any exhibitor of sheep. It doesn't matter what breed it is. It's a ewe that you can walk on a halter and you make some clothes or, you know, scarf and hat or something, something made out of wool to basically, you're, you're promoting wool and you're promoting your sheep and then you're judged on it. It must be handmade, it must be attractive, and you must be able to control your sheep. And then there's four age classes. So about this, there's quite a lot of money that you can win. You can see first prize for every division or every class is 50 bucks. And you can get a rosette. The problem is $50 is about the amount that it's going to cost for you as an adult to buy the yardage of American milled wool required to make a garment. So make sure that you make something that you're going to wear, you know, in future. At the end of the day, financially, it basically ends up being for pride, not for a gain. Let's see, you also need to make sure that you have your vet papers in order. And I'll talk about those in another video where I can show you hands-on the papers that are required. But bottom line, just to recap, you're going to look at your premium book for your state. That's going to be under the competition, like over here, participate, exhibit. You can print the, the entry form. I just did the enter online. Like I said, it was super easy. They're trying to get away from the paper forms, I think. And there will be 
in here, general information, I believe. Now you see how it opened another PDF, so you don't lose your information by clicking on any of this stuff. In here somewhere, here we go. Instructions for entering over the internet. And this is in general, general information. There's phone numbers and email that you can contact. And they were really, really good about getting back to me in a timely fashion. I had some questions and we'll, we'll go back to this, but just know that you can reach out pretty much at any point in the year and someone is willing to help you. I'm also willing to help you. Feel free to reach out via email through my website, ballyhoofiberemporium.com. I think we'll leave it at that for today. Go out, evaluate your sheep according to your breed standards. Go to the associated registry page or to your association page and find out what you need to do to get your animals registered. You can only show registered animals, so that's something to bear in mind. You can't show crossbreeds for most breeds. I think fin sheep is a little different. So if you have any questions, reach out. That's it for this time. Next time we will talk more about how to prepare your animal for show. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.